SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. Hi, I'm Ralph James. I'm the SPIE 2010 president. I'm here with Professor Charles Towns. Looking back, how did you first get the idea of the maser? Well, uh, I wanted, I was doing spectroscopy in the microwave region with oscillators, you see, electronic oscillators. I wanted to get to shorter wavelengths. And um, I thought about it and thought about it and I, the Navy knew I was interested and so they asked me to form a national committee to try to see how to get the shorter wavelengths. We wanted to get down shorter than, shorter, short as a millimeter, maybe even shorter than a millimeter. I wanted to get into the infrared. So, well, our committee traveled all over the country and examined things. We didn't find any things. So we gave up and said, well, we better write a, write a report saying we don't see any answers. And so we had a meeting in Washington and I woke up early in the morning worrying about it. Why haven't we been able to get an answer? Oh dear, and I, it was early, it was a nice sun, sunny morning. I went out and sat on a park bench, thought about it, and I thought about this and that. Why can't I get an answer? And none of these things seem to do it. And I said, well, of course, molecules and atoms can produce radiation in the short wavelengths, but we can't let them amplify. And, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute now. If we get them in more in an excited state and lower state, oh, they can amplify in principle. I pulled out a paper and pencil and worked out the equations. I said, look, it looks like we can make it work. Wow. Well, that was, the, that how, that was how it began. And of course, we had to work some years. I first, I first built one to, to amplify in the microwave region because I wanted to try to check it out and see it was working. Now, many people didn't believe it. Nobody was interested. And in, uh, in fact, the head of the, I was at Columbia University, and I had a student working on this, and he worked for a couple of years in the head of the department and the previous head of the department, and both of whom were outstanding physicists. They have Nobel Prizes. They came to my lab and said, look, that's not going to work. We know it's not going to work. You know it's not going to work. You've got to stop. You're wasting the department's money. Well, fortunately, I was an associate professor by then. They couldn't find me just because I was stupid. <laughs> so, and no, I, I think this has a chance. I'm going to keep working. So about three months later, we had it working, and oh boy, then everybody got excited. Everybody got excited after that once it was working, and of course, then everybody jumped into the field, and a lot of people have contributed. Looking back into the late 1950s, what was the research atmosphere like? Did, did you feel a lot of pressure uh, in terms of competition and pressure to, to make this a success, to, to bring your ideas into reality? Well, uh, I was doing microwave spectroscopy, and a few, a number of other people were doing that, and so it was somewhat competitive, but just uh, normal. Uh, we had a good time with it. Uh, <clears throat> then when I was trying to build the first Mesa, nobody competed. Because I said, nobody, most people didn't think it was going to work, and nobody competed, nobody bothered. Once the Mesa was invented, yes, there was a lot of competition in that field. And this is why when Art Shallow and I published a paper on the laser, we were careful not to say anything about it until we wrote a theoretical paper. Because we knew if we started to work on it, people would know that, and then everybody would jump in the field and would have competition. So we write a theoretical paper saying it could be done, mm -hmm. and we didn't say anything about it until we published that paper. And then everybody jumped in the field, and as I say, all the first lasers were built in industry. And I, did, I tried to build one, but uh, they beat me to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ted Mayman, of course, made the first laser work. What do you uh, consider to be the most important developments uh, in laser technology? Uh, and uh, have any of them been especially surprising to you? <coughs> well, there are many things that I didn't foresee. For example, uh, I didn't recognize that lasers would be useful for medicine, for medical purposes, and uh, enormously useful, and I'm just delighted. Uh, <coughs> but uh, so that's a surprising development. But I think the impressive developments are the uh, uh, fantastic variety of lasers and the enormous power that people are achieving and so on. I expected laser to be a nice little laboratory instrument, you see, which would do, to do spectroscopy and do very precise measurements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an enormous big thing now. <laughs> uh, uh, lasers are enormous big buildings and uh, very, very high power. More, the largest concentrated power anywhere, anywhere in the universe.
Yes. Well, anywhere in the world, anyhow, I guess uh, stars do a little better. <laughs> yes. The, most of the things that I imagine, and I could foresee a lot of things, but they've all happened and more too. Yes. Amazing. I'm impressed with how much people have contributed and how much, how much the field has grown. But that's the nature of science, you know. People keep contributing and the science grows and a lot of people add new ideas and so on and so the lasers have grown that way. Yes. It's just great. What uh, areas of science would interest you the most these days? Oh, well, there's so many fascinating areas. <laughs> I'm doing astrophysics now. And astronomy is becoming uh, become very, very interesting. Because biology has become very interesting. Biology is becoming more basic now. When I was a youngster, I liked biology. I liked plants and animals and so on. My brother liked plants and animals, and he became a biologist. Uh, he was older than I. I sometimes say, well, I couldn't compete with him. I had to do something different. But really, I didn't go into biology because biology was just descriptive then. It didn't explain things. It was just descriptive. I took my first course in physics. I said, oh, that really tries to help you understand things, how things work. That's what I want. So I went into physics. But now biology is becoming very basic. Because biology is very basic. It's a very, very important field and very exciting. Astronomy is great. Cosmology and there's so many deep puzzles there, you know, dark energy, for example, dark matter. Dark matter seems to be most of the matter in the universe, and we don't know what in the world it is. Mm -hmm. Those are some very, very basic questions there. And uh, so these are, there are many, many fascinating fields, but these are certainly two of them. Are you still uh, working with students uh, today? Yes, I have some students. I've just stopped taking graduate students. I took my last graduate student this mm -hmm. year, graduated and I'm not taking any more. I'm uh, almost 95 now. <laughs> I think I've got to pull out at some point. But I'm taking undergraduates. They can work with me for a short time and mm -hmm. taking undergraduates and I enjoy being with them. What advice would you give to students um, that might be considering choosing a field in science? Well, I would say pick the things that you find most interesting. Pick the things you find most interesting. That's what you're likely to do best the things that you find interesting. And then, you know, work intensively and have a great time. Work intensively, find out new things. It's an exciting business. Professor Towns, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to interview, uh, to come and join us here at Photonics West, to be able to speak with a few students at the luncheon earlier today, and uh, to really come and share a little bit of your energy, your knowledge, uh, and some of your experience with people that uh, so cherish your contributions. Well, thank you very much. It's awfully nice to be here. It's a, it's a great meeting. I'm glad to have a chance to meet you and lots of other people. Uh, I've enjoyed it a great deal. Thank you.